after you've been through a battle, after you've been through disappointment, how are you supposed to conduct your life? Some of you have been through a lot of different things. You thought things would be a little different by now, but things have continued on. You thought you'd be a little farther ahead, but you're here this morning wondering, how's it all going to shake out? How's it going to look? How's my future? What does God have for me? I don't know where you're at this morning or what you've been through. But no matter where you're at or what you've been through, you need to know that God is still on your side. He loves you. He knows where you're at this morning. I know. I remember uh, someone saying, I, I visited some a church service. I heard the pastor. I've never really forgot about it. It was a cold January day. We're not there yet. The pastor says this, and it was really cold out, lots of snow. And he said, would someone remind me of why we're here? He was talking, of course, about living in the Midwest and, and all the different things you got to deal with in the middle of winter. But many times in your life, you may have the same questions. What am I doing here? What's going on in my life? Am I going to beat this thing? We're in the middle of a, a plague, a pandemic. There's a lot of different words and descriptions. We're in a trying time in our nation. You might also be in a trying time in your life. So what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to conduct your life? I was reading in the book of Hebrews. Paul, possibly the, the writer, wanted to encourage the saints. The church was going through a difficult time. Did you know that the church has gone through difficult times? from time to time. And you're, church, you're the church today. We're a part of the church with Houston. We're a part of the church uh, around the world. And the people of God do struggle from time to time. Paul had some answers. I want to look at that this morning. You could flash it up there, John David. I guess let's read it together. So do not throw away your confidence. Listen. Listen. You can't give up on yourself. You can't give up on your future. Don't throw away your confidence. Listen, it would be easy to be, to be uh, beaten down. It would be easy to be wondering, how's it going to work out? Paul has some words to you and I. Don't throw away your confidence. Friend, you need to have confidence for your tomorrow. He goes on to say, it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you'll receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he's coming. He will come and not delay. And by and, but my righteous one will live by faith and I will take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed but to those who have faith and are saved. Some thoughts to you and I about where do we go from here? How are you supposed to conduct the week that you're in? We're in a, going into a new season. We thought we would be a little better possibly. Now we're going into a new season. Fall is kind of passing. We're going into the winter months. We still got some time. But what about you and your life, the season you're in? Here's some thoughts for you on how you should conduct this week. One, don't throw away your confidence. Be strong in the Lord. In spite of everything that's coming against you, don't lay down and don't call, call it quits. Be strong where you're at. You know, when things are coming against you, it's hard to be confident. Let's be honest. When you self 
when you have doubt and when you look at your life and you begin to question yourself, it's hard to be confident. But listen, you need to be confident in spite of how you feel. You need to be confident in spite of what is going on around you. It's important to have confidence. Why is that? Because the enemy is trying to beat you down. The enemy is trying to, to wear you out. But you need to rely on what God says about your life. Number two, it says uh, uh, you, you need to persevere. Now, what does that mean for you and I? You got to keep going. You, you do. You got to keep going forward in spite of all the different things. You got to persevere. Now, this is maybe a different message or thought, but I want to help us where we're at this morning. Be confident in the midst of your storm that God is going to bring you through it. Be confident in the midst of the trial that it's not going to last forever. Remember, in, you, you, we, we went through like a series several months ago. Actually, it was right before the pandemic. You know where it talked about the children of Israel in Babylon. They were brought into captivity, Old Testament, Jeremiah. And that's where uh, God spoke to him in Jeremiah 29, 11, where he says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. But what God was saying is in the midst of the battle, in the midst of captivity, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of where you are shut in, you need to know that I've got this thing. You're going to make it through. That's what Paul was saying here in the New Testament. He says you need to persevere in spite, listen, in spite of how you feel, you need to persevere. In spite of all the different things that come against you, you can't lay down and die. This is not the time to lay down and call it quits. You may want to. You may want to say it's not worth it. I got it. You may want to say, I've tried everything and I'm still dealing with the same thing. I understand that. But what good is it for you if you go backwards? You're going to find pleasure there? You're going to find pleasure going back to something that didn't work? You're going to find pleasure going back to something that doesn't ha have what you know you need? You've tried that before, it didn't work. You might as well keep going. You try, going backwards is not an option. Are you with me? Going backwards is not an option. It would be easy to be talked into going backwards, but you can't, my brother, my sister. We've come together. We're here to worship God. We're here to give God ourselves to, to get cleansed, to be renewed. I know it's hard to serve the Lord. Sure, it's hard to follow him in, in a dry time. Sure, it's hard to stay consistent, to love the Lord with all your heart and love others as the scripture says. Sure it is. But even though it's hard, it doesn't mean that we should not do it. Listen, in spite of everything that's coming against you, can you stand up? Can you say, okay, as for me and my house, that just may be you, that's all right, you're a house, we're going to serve the Lord. Can you somehow say, in spite of the winds that are coming against you, you are going to stand strong? I heard this, I think it was from Joel, I, I think it was from this morning, I flipped through the channels. This was a good thought that stuck to me. Sometimes in a message, you only get one thing out of it. That's okay. But here's what I got out of this. He says, you know, to take off as an airplane, you don't go with the wind, you go against the wind. You know, an airplane, if you take off at O'Hare, you know, if that plane, if you see the wind going this way, you might be a little worried. The wind, you might be worried when it comes against you, you think, wow, Look, this is really tough, but the wind has to go against you. You fly into the wind. Here's what I want to say. I don't know once again where you're at. You might be flying into the wind. There might be all the headwinds against you, 
But those are the things that God uses to, for you to climb higher, for you to get to where you need to be. The things, the, the adversarial moments in your life, the hardships, the struggles, those are the things that God uses in the life of the believer to help them to get to where they need to be. So we need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will see, receive what he has promised. Here's another quick thought. You got to receive. Come on, receive of God. You don't always got to be giving. Receive of God. When you come in here, when you come in here, you, 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 could, you could just sit there and receive of God. Listen, God wants you to receive of him. Why is that? Because the enemy is, throughout the week, uh, trying to wear you down. This is a time where we receive. When we come together, we're not here for any other reason but to let God fill us up. We give him worship, and as we worship him, we're receiving of God. But listen, you're here to receive of God. And then you go out in the world and you battle life and I got it. But listen, God wants to, to help you today. God wants to give you strength. Sometimes you don't know what you got until later. God is putting things in you now that you may not even know that you're receiving. You're receiving even if you don't seem to be receiving. Why is that? Because God knows what you, you, you need. You're a spiritual man, and God is filling you even right now. You may not seem it. It may not seem like you're getting anything, anything out of it. But let me tell you something. When you need it the most, then God is going to kick in some things that you received in those times that you didn't even know it. So you've got to receive of God. For in just a little while, he is coming. And I, I just want to go on that because these are some things that Paul was teaching the church. Here's what I want to say. You're not going to always fight the same battle. In a just a little while, you're going to get through this thing. You're always not going to be fighting the things that you fight on a regular basis. Here's what I want to say. Relief does come. So you do got to stay in the fight. What they're talking here, of course, is heaven. And ultimately, that is your destination. Ultimately, heaven is our destination. I know that's difficult for us here on earth yeah, to, un to, to get a glimpse of heaven. But you're not going to be here forever. The life that you're toiling with is going to come to an end eventually whether by age or any circumstances here on this earth. What I'm saying is, toiling here on this earth isn't going to last forever. So you ought to kind of be thankful for the toiling you're, you're going through. And I'm not saying that heaven is something, no, you, you, you shouldn't look forward to. What I'm saying is, don't allow the storms to get you down. Don't allow the weather, don't allow the things to, to, to rain down on you to cause you to be displaced and to cause you to be hurt and, and the pain to overtake your life. What Paul was saying in just a little while, listen, it's, it's going to change. And did you know, and we don't talk much about it, but did you know once you're there, you're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, you know, God was with me the whole time and it wasn't as bad as I thought. This, the, your life is just a moment compared to eternity. You're going to make it through this. Let's continue on. Some, some, these are just some words, words of exhortation to the believer in a difficult time. And, but my righteous one will live by faith. What is he saying here? You gotta, you gotta live when you don't understand it and see it. It says the believers are going to live by faith. You gotta live by faith. You got, to, you got to live your life when you don't see it going in the right direction. He says you got to live by faith. Abraham, we talked about Abraham, the message is online Saturday night and, 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 and this morning at 8.30. But Abraham didn't see nothing. You know, what it's, you know what it said about Abraham? He pitched his tents. He, he literally put up his tents. That's how they lived there in the desert and, and, and the areas of the region then. But at that uh, time of day, he says he pitched his tents and he didn't even know what God was doing in his life. 
What I want to say, you got to live by faith. When you don't even see it, when you don't feel like it, you still got to be obedient to God. You still got to do what he asks you to do. Let's continue. But my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in one who shrinks back. Now, he's saying, don't shrink back. Don't throw in the towel. When you're under attack, when you're going through things, don't shrink back. This is not the day to shrink back. What do you mean by that? Shrinking back, what I'm talking about is going backwards. They used to tell us this one. The program I used to be in when I was 16, 17, uh, or 18, uh, uh, a certain program, you know, they always tell us that you're either going forward or you're going backwards. You're really never staying the same. Here's what I'm going to say. This is not the time to be going backwards. I know they tell us that our nation is going backwards, the economy is going backwards, everything around us is going backwards. So, Pastor, how, how, how could it not be when my company, when, when life is going backwards, how do I keep going forward? You know how you do? By keep trusting Him, by keep getting up every day and says, Lord, you know, I'm going to serve you in, in spite of how I feel. In spite of what's going on around me, I'm going to trust you. You know the verses before this? These verses here in uh, 33, 30, 32, 31. You know what Paul asked him to do? I left it out because we only have so many verses on the screen on a Sunday. You know what Paul was talking about for like five verses before that? He says, listen, you need to remember who God is in your life and what he's done for you. For five verses, he was trying to get the people of God to remember the goodness of God in their life. You know why we sing songs? Part of the reason? It's God doesn't need our worship, but we need to worship him to remember how great and how, what he's done in our life. It's not that God needs it, but we need to worship God. So we come here to remember, to get edified and encouraged to come together. That's why I was glad uh, 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 Lakewood, they, they, their first service. Sure, online is great, and that's good. But, you know, there's not something about when you come together and the people of God. Jesus said it this way. When two or more, he really said Jesus said it, when two or more are gathered together in my name. I used to live in China. Our family lived in China. I, I was pastoring a church, and after Tiananmen Square, we just kind of picked up. We resigned the church, and, and after we saw Tiananmen Square, some of the ones, we, we went to China. And I wanted to just to help the college students, and I taught in a few universities there. And, um, but, but... We got together with some of the students at different times in our apartment. Not a lot of heat, cold, northwest China. Not a very uh, glamorous uh, region. A lot of cold, dirty, uh, a concrete apartment. One bedroom, had five kids there. But you know what? What I found that, that the scripture where two or more are gathered together, that's real stuff. Here's what I want to say. You ought to be thankful today where you're at. You ought to be thankful where you're at, that God is working in your life. Paul was saying that in the verses above it. He says, listen, you got to remember everything you've been through. God has brought you a long way. Here's what I want to say. Sure, I enjoyed my time there in China. Sure, that was all good. But I'm telling you, I I'm glad to be where I'm at today. What I'm saying is you need to be thankful where you're at today. You need to be thankful how far God has brought you. We're living in a day where they're saying the whites and the blacks, especially uh, against each other. Baloney. Let me tell you something. That's a false narrative. There's more love with the Christian church, one with each other. Listen, and the enemy is trying to tear us down. Here's what I want to say. We have come a long way. We're not perfect, but, but the human race has come a long way. I know they're saying we're worse than ever. They tell us that human beings are worse than ever. That's a lie. You've come a long way, and God has brought you a long way. So I want to encourage you today to stay at it. Keep loving each other. Listen, don't throw in the towel. Don't think that it's a lost cause to be nice to. Keep trying. 
That's the lie of the enemy. Let me tell you, God has brought you a long way and he's going to keep bringing you. God is more for you and God's not done with your life. You might think, oh, no, my best days are behind me. Baloney. Your best days are still right out in front of you. God has some good things for you. The enemy is trying to tear you down. God wants to build you up. The enemy wants to tell you what you can't do. God wants to tell you what you can do. The enemy wants to tell you that your past is going to influence your future. Let me tell you something. Your past is yesterday. Your past, listen, I don't care where you've been or what you've done. I am concerned about where you're going. You need to worry about not where you've been. That's over with. You need to think about where God is taking you. Don't spend your energy on yesterday. Spend your energy on where God is taking you. They tell us once again. They tell us that uh, the, the news, we're bad people at times. Here's what I want to say. The Christian church, the believers of God, are the best people on earth. What do I mean by that? It's true. You know what? The believers of God, they love each other. There, there's no racism in, in the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. What do you mean by that? Oh, I'm not saying they're perfect. What I'm saying is that you ought to be thankful for being a part of where God has brought you. So I want to say, you might look at your life today. You might look at your life and say, I, I, I should have more. Okay, but you could have less. You say, well, I, I, I should be farther along. I should be a, 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 not, a, a notch above in this position. I got it. Maybe you, instead of making this, you should be thinking, I should be making more money. But let me tell you, it could be a lot worse. Sure it could. It could be a lot worse. And we got to start being thankful for how far God has brought us. You know one of the things that's talks about it in the, in the last days? What's going to bring people down is ungratefulness. Unthankfulness. There's a spirit that's taking over our nation and the world of being unthankful. We, need, we deserve something. Someone has to give us something. We're entitled to something. No. You're, listen, God has given you everything you need. Listen, heaven is yours and no one can take that away from you. You're about the richest person that you can be. I know this sounds elementary to you. I don't care. That's the gospel. This gospel tells you that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Here's what I want to say. Once again, I don't know where you're at, but you need to leave here today being thankful. Thankful that God has helped you, that God has brought you through, that God has worked in your life. Let's wrap this up, but my righteousness will live by faith and take no pleasure in shrinking back. We're not going to shrink back. You're not going backwards this week. You're going to keep going forward. Listen, but we do not belong to those who shrink back. Paul is trying to encourage them. We don't belong to those that, that go backwards. No. We're a part of the family, the faith of God. We're keep going forward. But to those who have faith and are saved, this is who you are. You have faith and you're saved. You know, if you are saved here today, you got about the best thing you can have. I know being saved, what does that mean? Come on, I just want everything. Give to me, come on. Come on, Jesus has paid it all for you. Being saved, you're saved, you're free. You're, you're saved. That's not a big deal. I know we don't make it a big deal, but I'm trying to make it a big deal in your life. God saved you. That's a big thing. You, you're, you're, not a, you're not a part of a lost cause. You got a future. You know who don't have a future? Satan and the enemy. He's lost out. As long as you got breath, God has something for you. As long as you got breath, God has another open door. You don't know what God's going to do in your life tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
because you given your time and your life to God, God could open up a door for you. God could send somebody your way. Your future is brighter today than it's ever been. What do I mean? The scripture is very clear. The children of God are his prize. It's true. You're the modern day Israel, the people of God here on earth. God is working in your life. God is helping you. So I want to say, let's be the church. Let's be the family of God. There's people suffering all over the world. Let's join hands one with another. The church is suffering in Africa. The church is suffering in Asia. Did you know that there's Christians right now being killed because of their faith? And we're here wondering, I don't have enough. Let me tell you something. You got enough. You, you ought to be thankful. There's, there's people all over the world that are suffering because of their faith. And we want to fight about stupid things. And we want to look at our life and say, woe is me. Not woe is you. Blessed is you. Not woe is you. You are a blessed individual. You got favor on your life. God is working in your life. I know I'm swimming against the tide. I know I'm swimming against the tide in your life because you got headwinds, but I don't care. I'm gonna tell you what the scriptures say about your life, not the way you're feeling, because you're feeling the, the wind against your, you're feeling the attack against your life. But God is saying that he's using those things to take you higher, to take you farther. And one day when you're up there, and, and, and you're flying, and, and you're there with you, you'll understand that all the turbulence, all the different things that have come against you had purpose behind it. And a matter of fact, God used it. And I'm closing with this. Could you imagine Jesus? Let's say he really didn't understand everything. He did, he was God. But could you imagine being on the cross, going through all the things, the attacks, did you know that all hell came against Jesus even after all man came against him? Hell unloaded on him. It was not just a physical fight. It was a spiritual fight. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You're in a spiritual fight. And you have everything coming against you. And you've been sapped of all strength. Jesus stood there. And you're going to be able to stand there. Jesus weathered the storm. You are going to weather. Because he lives, you can live. You live. He weathered the storm. I'm telling you this week, all the attack that has come on you, know that if God be for you, who dare be against you? He says, can famine? Can, can principalities? powers of this world and they're coming against you can these things separate me from the love of god paul says no nothing can separate me from the love of god god loves you god's with you and god's going to see you through in jesus name there's someone here matter of fact let's just all Pray this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, help your people this week. Fight their battles, we pray. God, fight their battles, we pray. When the enemy comes in like a flood, as this is scripture now, Lord, we're praying scripture. When the enemy comes in like a flood, raise up a standard. Raise up a guard. Raise up, Lord, and, and help your people this week. Lord, fight your people's battles this week, please. When someone tries to hurt them, would you help them? When it gets hard, would you give them your yoke? Lord, bless your people, we pray. Help them in wherever life takes them this week. Whatever they're doing, strengthen. They're, 
the spirit of Jesus be in them. Help your people this week, we pray. We surrender to you in our closing prayer. We surrender our lives at the altar of God this morning. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand.